Good morning everyone, welcome to our small footprint. My name is Nissa, and if you're new here, we are a family of eight who live off grid in Australia. So I'm trying to get some canning jobs done before I go on my grocery shop. So I go on my grocery shop this, uh, it, tomorrow I leave for it uh, so I'm trying to get some of the stuff done that I had planned for this month make sure it's done before I go on the trip because once I come back from the trip it's always really busy with all the food and everything else that comes up and some things get missed so one of the things that I needed to get done was canning baked beans it was something that I really wanted to try I bought some tomato juice last uh, shopping trip to make it off a really basic recipe that I found on an Australian Facebook uh, canning group. Uh, so it was a really standard basic recipe that I wanted to give a go. Mimicking sort of the Heinz baked beans, English baked beans style recipe, not a southern style, just a, a basic tomato based beans recipe. Uh, so I wanted to start off with something easy, basic, simple that was well tested and go from there before I decided what to do. And I wasn't sure if the kids were going to like it. So it was a bit of an experimentation thing. We haven't, we don't eat a whole lot of beans and I'm trying to reintroduce them. But uh, for the moment, it wasn't something that we've eaten a lot of, but they have had the Heinz baked beans in tins and I like baked beans. So I thought that it, this was worth giving a go. So I told everyone I was going to do it and everyone asked me to bring you along when I did. So I'm doing that and they turned out really well. So this is how I did this particular batch. If you have any really good recipes for baked beans, then put them in the comments below because I'm going to try some variations on this because I really like the idea of having more meals that the kids can just open a jar of. They can warm it if they want or they can eat it cold straight off the shelf, especially in busy times of the year are really handy to have. So uh, I am looking forward to adding more of those sorts of things to the shelves. So come along and see how I did the baked beans uh, and I'll show you them at the end as well. All right, so as I said, I'm using uh, I'm making a basic tomato based uh, baked beans recipe, not not sort of a southern uh, style. This is a English style is what it seems to be referred to as similar to the Heinz baked beans that you buy in a tin. It's a pressure canning recipe as all beans are and it's not something I've done a whole lot of before. We haven't done a whole lot of bean cooking because we don't eat a whole lot of beans. I would like to introduce them a little bit more into the diet but it's one of those things that you have to figure out how you like them. Daryl really likes black bean black rice burritos when he's had Mexican food from takeaway places so I'm going to order some black beans and black rice to give those sort of things a go as well and then I can can the black beans up on the shelf and use them in the burritos with it having ready made on the on the shelf sort of thing but for this recipe we're going with basics so I used standard just navy beans it's just a small white bean I used about a kilo and a half of them and I picked through them for any obviously yucky ones any dark brown shriveled up ones uh, as you're supposed to do with dried beans then I covered them generously with water uh, to boil them so I also wanted to I haven't shown this in a while the USB rechargeable lighter this is one of my favorite tools I really need to get a page up with my favorite tools this is a USB rechargeable electric lighter and it works fantastically for gas hot plates anyway cover them generously with water and then bring to the boil you're gonna boil them for 15 minutes and then you can turn them off and let them sit for 30 to 60 minutes uh, this all this process is helping to degas the beans so uh, beans have a large molecule sugar in them I can't remember it's called a glycerides or something along those lines and the body doesn't have the correct enzymes to break it down in the stomach so the beans go undigested through to the intestines and then they get broken down in the intestines and that's what causes gas from the beans so to help with that you can what they call degassing it which is part and parcel of soaking them so uh, theoretically an 8 to 12 hour soak and a rinse and uh, and a strain and rinse is the same process but this particular recipe is speeding that up a little bit and calls for some cooking so we boil them for 15 minutes uh, and then we let it sit for 30 to 60 and then we drain it and we rinse it and then we put fresh water into the pot and we put the beans back into the pot and we boil it for another 15 minutes and then we let it sit for the 30 to 60 minutes again uh, and then drain them and rinse them to use for the recipe so I'm following this recipe as stated because I wanted to give it a go first and try it and then once I can see these flavors then I can adjust them as we want to adjust them sort of thing rather than uh, trying to start on a, a untested recipe straight up 
so as i said you can theoretically soak them for 8 to 12 hours which would have the same benefits but i was working in the kitchen anyway so this was no problem so while they're doing that the beans are going to basically look all plumped up and like they're cooked but they're not going to be cooked they're still a raw bean but they're going to be nice and plumped up and have absorbed all that liquid uh, so while the beans are standing for that second time while they're doing that 30 to 60 minute stand at the second time we're going to work on the sauce so the as i said the basic recipe from this australian pressure canner group on facebook is uses tomato juice and onions so we're going to dice up three to four onions really nice and small uh, and then we're going to put that in a pot with four liters of tomato juice one and a third cups of sugar and i added some molasses to it and there's some salt as well so i did detour slightly i added some molasses because i like the brown sugar bean type thing so i added some molasses because i only use raw sugar now this uses tomato juice which was a nice simple thing to use uh, and I think that it worked really well, but tomato juice isn't something I would normally buy. So I think it would work just as well with diluted passata, and that's probably what I'll try next time, but we'll see. Uh, the, I also added some liquid smoke. Uh, the recipe states that you could put a couple of drops in each jar. I don't have a pipette or anything to do that, and so I just put about two teaspoons into the whole pot. Uh, bring the sauce up to a simmer and you're going to simmer it until the onion's soft and translucent so you want it, the onions nice and well cooked i did consider mincing them rather than dicing them thinking that the kids might like them that but they're going to be pressure canned as well which is going to break them down even further and so i sat there and went no i'm just going to leave it like this to start with and we'll work from there uh so you're going to simmer it i think it took about 25 30 minutes for me to get it to a point where that when I tasted it there was no crunch to the onion and that's what I was looking for because I like my onion soft I like the flavor of the onion but I like it soft and I think it'd be really nice if you caramelized the onion first and then added tomato sauce and you'd have caramelized onion have that extra flavors but as I said I was working with the basic recipe to begin with because I wanted to just follow that first see what it tasted like and then I can alter it how I want afterwards I used the Fowler's size 20 jars, which are a 650 ml jar. Uh, I'm not real sure how the kids are going to like them. So I didn't want to use too large a jar and then have wastage. Uh, and I'm not sure whether all the kids will like them or only some of the kids. So I went with the smaller jars uh, and I had enough there to do it. So that was fine. Uh, you need to fill the jars two thirds full with the the beans now as i said the beans aren't cooked they are still raw but they're nice and plumped and they've absorbed all the liquid and they're the size that they will basically end up being so by doing the boiling and everything else those beans are not going to alter in size very much once they're processed so you fill the jar for about two-thirds worth of beans which allows for some movement in size and plenty of sauce to be in there as well because of course they're going to absorb a bit more sauce while they're cooking and you want them to because you want them to take on the flavors of the sauce I wasn't real sure how many jars I was going to need. The recipe I think stated 20 jars of the 20 of the smaller jars than than the ones I'm using. So I just did what I had to do, went and found more jars out of the cupboard as needed and got as many jars as I needed to fill and put the beans distributed to about the two-third mark through all the jars. Uh, once the beans are in the jars, then you need to top it up with the hot liquid. So I like to fill my Fowler's jars just to the shoulder because the neck's narrow. I find that I have issues with siphoning if I take it any further than just the shoulder. So I fill to the shoulder with the hot tomato sauce and I find that that works for me. I am bringing th up things up to temperature in on a gas burner and they run a little hot and the if you take the pressure up too fast you can have siphoning as well. So there's a few different variables there but I find with these jars that narrow at the neck that filling to the shoulder is a good point to use. Once all the jars were topped up to the shoulder with the liquid, you want to debubble them well. So I quite vigorously moved the beans around and debubbled the jars because there's lots of points in there that could have air pockets in them. And then that will affect your headspace and you want your headspace correct for your beans to last the time on your shelf. So using a plastic implement of some sort, a packing stick if you've got it, I can't find my packing stick for the life of me. So what I've been using is the end of one of those plastic spatulas with the spatula taken off it. It works quite well. So get in there and stir the beans around and make sure that you got all the air pockets up to the top of the surface the beans shouldn't swell anymore as i said but you've got to leave a little bit of you know 
room for movement there as well with anything that you're doing. Once you've debubbled it, you'll find that the level of your liquid will have dropped a little bit because any of those air pockets will be have been disrupted. So you need to top it up to make sure that your headspace is right and you've got the liquid to the shoulder in all the jars so that they're all even and all at the right spot. If you don't have enough headspace in your jars, they won't last as long on your shelf. You should eat them first sort of thing things have a te can have a tendency to go bad if your headspace is too high. So you want to make sure that you've got a, the right amount of headspace within your jars. Once all that was done and the jars were all evenly filled, headspace was correct and everything else, we did the normal process. Now you're going to want to clean the rims really well with white vinegar because you've got some sugar and tomato and stuff in your sauce. I did knock a whole jar over at one point while I was doing this which means that there was some splashing on the jar so I was really careful to clean that up. Uh, the I also because I'm limited on space and everything else I tend to drag the ladle over the rest of the jars as I'm filling the ones at the back and that means that I drip. So if you've got a better method where you're not doing that then you're going to have less issues with things on the rim but I make sure to clean them really well. Uh, I actually have some paper towel at the moment which is working well because I can't find my lint-free cloths that I had uh, and I can just compost the paper towel so I might actually get myself some more paper towel this month just because it's really convenient to have and it can be composted so it's not such a big deal. Uh, I prefer to avoid paper towel but I have to have clean fabric cloths as well like and if there isn't any then I don't have a choice so having paper towels handy. Anyway uh, so clean the rims really well. These are Fowler's jars. So the lid seal around the outside rim, the rubbers around the outside rims rather than on the top. So you have to clean around the outside as well as on the top. Ball, Mason, it's really that very top bit that's the most important spot. Uh, the, the kitchen, as I said with the kitchen, it becomes an issue because I'm trying to can, but I'm also trying to make meals around everything else. I am going to get a bench where I can have all, like when my jars come out of the canner they can go on the bench away from my actual prep bench because at the moment I, they end up having to sit there for 24 hours and then I'm still trying to cook around them so anyway it's it's you know work in progress progress not perfection and all that sort of stuff still is just the the motto of the day at the moment with the floors and everything else regardless okay so because the jars because the jars were quite sticky, I made sure to clean them really well. I put the rubber rings onto the jars, which is the single use part of a Fowler's jar, and I clean them with a bit of vinegar as well, just in case I had something on my hand. I like to wipe the inside of the lids with a bit of vinegar as well. If you've seen any of my videos, I do it on all of them. It's just it's just making sure that everything's nice and clean because we want these jars to seal. Stainless steel lids go on and clips go on the jars. So I ended up needing two canners for the amount of jars that I ended up with uh, because I can't double stack the Fowler's jars easily in the canner because the clip height. So you can theoretically stack them with a rack in between, but it creates a lot of height uh, and the pre they definitely don't fit in the Presto. I think they might fit in the Buffalo, but it's not ideal so running two canners was I have two so and they fit in the two so that was just what I did so I put all the jars into the canner of course the water in the canner was warm to hot because that's what temperature the jars are so you always want the water in the canner when you place the jars in there to be the same temperature as the jars so there's no thermal shock uh, the jars go into the canner and then the lids go on and the and the water is brought up. Now, as I said before, if you bring your temperature up too fast, you have a higher risk of siphoning. So you wanna bring that initial temperature up slower so that you are allowing the jars to reach temperature at a slower rate so that you don't have the risk of it boiling in the jar and siphoning. Uh, once the pots are on, you get to a point where they're throwing that steady steam of stream of steam. And you want, once it's doing that, you want time 10 minutes and let that that uh that steam to be released which means that your canner is going to be empty of all air once that 10 minutes is up you put the weights on and you let it come up to pressure when your weight's going to jiggle now the buffalo is about a 35 liter canner and the presto is 21 i think so the uh, buffalo took about 10 minutes longer to come up to pressure than the Presto it also had more jars in it which is also going to create take longer for it to come up to pressure and things like that so I just set two timers when each one started jiggling the timers went off uh, so they both they both started the steam at the same time and I could put the weights on at the same time but they took the larger pot took a bit longer to come up to pressure which is fine 
So I put the weights on, then waited for them to jiggle and started the timer. So the 20s are processed for 65 minutes from when the weights start to jiggle. Uh, so I set the timer, as I said, each one 65 minutes, one was 10 minutes behind the other. Once the jars are done, you need to wait for the valve to drop, the pressure to be nil in those uh, canners, partly because of safety, you know, you're going to burn yourself, but also because that is part of the processing. So the warm up and the cool down at the beginning and the end of the canning is part of the the processing of these jars to make sure that they are safe to consume. So once it's dropped, then you can remove the jars to a board. I put use a wooden board or you can use a piece of fabric or something. I have a stainless steel bench, which is not ideal for putting hot jars on. So I always use a wooden cutting board and then you want them there for 24 hours. Uh, so you let them sit for 24 hours and then you take the clips off and or if you have ball mason jars, you take the rings off and you test the seal on the lids. You can't be 100% uh, sure if a jar has sealed until that 24 hours is up. Once the that 24 hours is up, take the, the clips off and check the, the lids by picking them up by the lid. I did use, reuse two rings in this batch of beans because I had taken some rings off the apple butter the other day. Uh, and some people do reuse the rings. I don't generally because I worry that if it fails then that's a waste of food sort of thing because it doesn't always fail straight up. Uh, I'll be checking those reused rings numerous times over the next couple of weeks and make sure that those two jars still stay sealed because sometimes it's not straight away that they fail but it's within the first couple of weeks uh, and then they go bad on the shelf and you get smells and stuff too which you don't want but also that food is wasted whereas if it fails straight away you can stick it in the fridge and use it but I did re did trial two so that I didn't have to open a whole new pack of 12 rings and we'll see how they go. Uh, and then that so after the 24 hours I decided to serve them up to the kids and see what they liked now I personally just like cold beans on hot toast that's how I like it the first child who was out there I offered them cold and said do you like them cold or would you like them warmed up he ate them cold and said he wanted them cold so everyone got cold beans on toast which is just how I prefer them but they can heat them up if they wanted to so we had a loaf of bread in the freezer from the hamper I toasted it all up in the cast iron pan using a little bit of oil and then served it with the beans over the top and the kids went through three jars of beans <laughs> so I guess they liked it <laughs> uh, we will see kids are kids and I served it up to them and they ate it and they ate three jars that doesn't mean that they'll reach for it and open it and eat it another time that's it's variable so I'm going to assess I'm going to buy some more white beans because there's a few things that I want to try and you can do white beans and soups and stuff too so I'm gonna give that a go too so I will buy some more white beans to do more of these with and I quite like baked beans so even if they don't eat them I can we just don't always have bread that can be used as toast and I like them with toast so We'll see how we go, but they're probably nice with scrambled eggs and sausages and things like that too. So anyway, we will find ways to use them and I will probably make more. But what I'm going to be watching is while I'm gone, especially like they could potentially use them while I'm gone as meals over the few days when uh, Daryl is doing food because uh, they generally only eat food that I've pre-prepared. They generally reheat food and uh, use things that I've already made before I left rather than making whole meals because at this point in the month it's kind of hard to make whole meals. You have to have the skill set to be able to make it from a variety of not a lot of food. So we'll see if they go through some while I'm gone because that'll be a good sign as to whether they're going to eat them. Uh, but also each time we get the hamper we normally get a few loaves of bread so that would be a good sign too if they got some loaves of bread and they can have the beans they all know how to fry off eggs and everything too so they can toast bread fry off eggs and all that sort of stuff i think we've got a kilo of bacon left in the freezer but that's all uh so there's not a lot of bacon to have with eggs or anything in the few days i'm gone so i don't know we'll see we'll assess once we get back so it was a success anyway they tasted just like heinz baked beans to be honest they were lovely and sweet and soft and melt in your mouth and uh really good so i'm ha really happy with that and i but i think i would like to try like a southern beans recipe you know like one that has bacon and stuff in it at some point because i really like that sort of flavor and i think i made something like a boston baked beans i don't know where that boston like there's lots of bostons in the world i'm not sure where that's related to and geography is not my forte uh that is something that daryl teaches the children uh so the but this this 
the uh, they call it southern style i suppose but i don't know whether boston is referring to somewhere in america or it's somewhere in england that makes me sound very dense but as i said geography i have no problem admitting that geography is really really not my forte it has never interested me and anything that i'm not interested in i have a really hard time retaining uh, I've never wanted to travel or anything else. I'm really happy where I am and therefore geography hasn't made any sense. Anyway, I'm squirreling a little bit, aren't I? But recipes, if you've got any recipes for baked beans, then put them in the comments for me because I have made some that have the smoky, bacony sort of flavors before and I think I'd like to try and replicate that in a jar. Though there is the issue that if sometimes if you do tomato-based products in a jar, there it, it can burn. Uh, like I've done meatballs in posada in jars before and I haven't liked that slightly burnt tomato flavor. Uh, and because it's being processed in a pressure canner then that can happen which is why i think the tomato juice works really well because it's really thin but again i reckon i could like it's four liters of tomato juice i reckon you could probably use a liter of posada and three liters of water and have a very similar texture and flavor in there without it being overpowering but i don't know i'm gonna have to have some experiment experimentation with it and see i really would like to figure out a few ways to make beans on the shelf work though i have seen in the rebel canner group they do a burrito in a jar with rice and beans and everything in a jar uh, which is against the national, you know, the American f uh, food preserving people, the thing. It's a, it's a rebel canning recipe, but I do a few of those and I'm happy to attempt them and, and assess my own risk factors for those as well. So I might give that a go at some point because that would be really handy for Daryl. He could just grab a jar of a burrito and a jar out off the shelf, warm it up and wrap it up in a tortilla and then he's got a meal for when I just really couldn't be bothered cooking. So anyway, I'm rambling. Uh... I will see you again tomorrow or the next day. I'm doing the, I've been taking photos and inventorying all my pantry and everything for the shopping trip. So I will share that with you because I keep on saying I'll share a planning video and I never get around to it. I am determined to get it out this time, even if some of it's done at mum's once I get there. Uh, I'm taking footage here and then I might have to put it together at mum's, but that's fine. Uh, so I will see you again in the next couple of days and I will catch up with you then and talk to you later. <laughs> Bye guys.